I'll just start off by opening uh, comments just to say that um, we're we're really excited to to open up our season this weekend down in a tournament down at Coastal Carolina. You know, their coach, who I know very well, his his son played for us for a year here at Virginia, Gary Gilmore. Uh, they're opening a new stadium, a beautiful multi-million dollar stadium down there, and we agreed a couple of years ago to go down there and play in this opening tournament, and, and, and we're, we're excited. Certainly, we, we start the season off with a very, very good opponent in Kent State who was in the College World Series uh, just a few years ago, uh, Appalachian State, who some of you probably recall beat us here in a regional uh, in our own ballpark a few years ago, and then uh, certainly the home team in Coastal Carolina that year after year has a tremendous college baseball program. So it should be a, a exciting first weekend for us. Two out of the three teams, Kent State and Coastal Carolina, are predicted to, to win their conferences. So sh certainly we'll, uh, we'll need to play good baseball. Um, you know, we're excited. Our guys have been working extremely hard. Um, you know, we got a lot of new faces. I was actually doing the, uh, with our operations assistant, I was doing the, the, the rooming list this morning for this trip and half of the team is returning players second third or fourth years and the other half of the team are our new players are rookies so uh, half the team we're taking down there uh, are new to this program and um, you know so they're working extremely hard and we're we're excited certainly coming off last year and and looking forward to uh, to the 2016 season so questions you speak to your plans for the weekend rotation, and particularly measure city. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, we'll we'll start Connor Jones game one uh, against Kent State, and then against Appalachian State in game two. Uh, Daniel Lynch, a first-year left-hander from Richmond, will start uh, game two, and then uh, in 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 game three we'll start Tommy Doyle, a second year. So we got a third year, first year, and a second year going for us. Uh, you know, I think a lot's been made of or talked about already that you know we lost a lot off last year's pitching staff uh, certainly the college world series uh, most outstanding player in spores and then you know Brandon Waddell was tremendous in our rotation for three years as was Nathan Kirby uh, so you know we've we I, I believe we have a lot of talent in that starting rotation um, you know but uh, two of the three need to kind of uh, learn quickly on what it's going to take to to win at this level. Specifically about Daniel Lynch, uh, Daniel Lynch is, is starting Game Two for us because he's earned that. You know, I thought that uh, he had a really good fall. Uh, he's, I feel like he's a very mature player. Uh, he's he's shown a lot of poise out there. The upside of this young man is really tremendous. He he's six foot five, left-handed pitcher. Um, he's got a pretty good idea of what he's doing out there. A uh, pretty special, talented kid that is, I think is going to just really grow throughout his time for us, and and uh, has a chance to really be one of the greats in our uniform that's pitched for. So, the last time he had a freshman was with Waddell, and obviously mm -hmm. he was a guy that had that maturity about him that could do it from right away. Is there similarities? I think so. There? I think there uh, there are quite a bit of similarities. Um, you know, Daniel Lynch uh, has an ability to throw multiple pitches for strikes. Uh, he, he seems to have a, quite a bit of confidence in himself. Um, I think he's going to develop into having a really, really good arm. You know, he's somebody that he'll flash a 89, 90, 91 miles an hour right now, which is pretty special for a young left-handed pitcher. So, uh, you know, we we have a lot of confidence in him to start him this opening opening weekend. And we're just going to ask him, like we are the other guys, just to go out and do their job. That, that That's not going to be seven or eight innings the opening weekend. You know, these these first few weekends until the the pitchers build their pitch count up, you know, it's going to take a, a lot of them within one game to uh, to win a college baseball game. So you get a chance early on to start to get a get some guys in there and start to see maybe what kind of depth you have. What, what is uh, Hazley not in that rotation? Where is he from a pitching standpoint? Uh, you know, I, uh, Adam is not going to be in the rotation this weekend. He will uh, pitch for us uh, very, very quickly. You know, um, I don't know whether that will be out of the bullpen this weekend. I don't anticipate that. Uh, he's a just because he's a two-way player. He's a little bit behind uh, the other guys. Uh, he'll be our certainly be our starting center fielder. Uh, but um, he's going to be a little bit behind from a pitching standpoint, but it won't take him long. 
You right. said Lynch earned that right to start the second game. Mm -hmm. What what point do you kind of identify that? And is there a point where you say, "Okay, I really like"? Would you wait for all the fall? Do you, when do you? Yeah, it's. It, I mean, it's pretty ongoing, quite frankly. Uh, I mean, really, we ma really made the final decision after what we saw this past weekend. Had all the guys that get a chance to throw again. You know, really, we were kind of zeroing in to five or six guys that we were looking in the rotation spot. You know, Jones has obviously done a great job for us, and and Tommy Doyle uh, looked good throughout the fall and is much improved from last year. Um, you know, I don't make too much about where they fall in the rotation other than the one, you know, uh, Jones is pretty special. And then, you know, we'll have to kind of see who stays in what roles. But I think this is going to be continue through the early part of the season, continue to be uh, a situation that guys got to continue to prove themselves because there's other guys too that are pitching really well that I know are going to want those opportunities as well. Brian, given the influx of, of newcomers in yeah. the program, how beneficial was the form trip just in terms of the folks getting accustomed to one another? And well, that actually was last year. So that that you're saying our our, fo our foreign trip. Yeah, that actually was last season. So um, obviously, all those new guys didn't have anything to do with this year. Um, it, it had a lot to do with last year. I thought. Um, I thought it made a, a big impact for us. But even though we didn't do that this year, we tried to do. You know, we try to do some things every year to get those young new players to get them to understand what our expectations are and you know, uh, how they need to carry themselves and, and get them around each other this, so they can start to understand what Virginia baseball is about. And, you know, we played two games this fall, one against the team from Canada that we always do, and we also burned one of our 56 games this year to, uh, to play high point in the fall. Um, so that I think that was good for those young players. We had a nice crowd. It was good for those young players to see, you know, that, you know, how things operate when it's, you're just not scrimmaging. So. Um, I think it's a pretty tight-knit group. I think there's going to be some of those young kids that are going to make some immediate impact, obviously Daniel Lynch. But you know, I anticipate on Friday that we'll have three first-year position players in our starting lineup um, that um, you know, uh, I, th I believe will do a good job. You know, we're looking at two or three different guys at third base and about three different first-years for two spots in the outfield. So. Um, you know, I, I, those young kids, not only in the mound, but as a, from a position player standpoint, are going to need to make an immediate impact. You, you mentioned sort of piggybacking off of those thoughts. Now that you're in this era of heightened expectations mm -hmm. before every season, I wondered if your um, team building, you mentioned the games in the fall, in fall ball, I wondered if, the, if the, the team building aspect is different than when you first started this job. Mm -hmm. um, what do you do with these new guys coming in to try to build that, you know, that, the level of expectation and how it's risen? And do you have them hitch their wagon to specific upperclassmen or anything like that? Or because of the caliber of recruit maybe that you're getting now, they come a little bit more prepared for that sort of pressure? I think they might be a little bit more prepared just because it, I don't know that it, the caliber of recruit has changed for us at all. I just think the way high school baseball and travel baseball is even more more and more there, they're exposed to things at more of a national level and a more competitive level, um, w w which is good. And I think that it makes them more prepared to, uh, to be successful right away. At this level of college baseball, you are year in and year out, you're relying on first-year players to make an immediate impact because we just lose so many players after three years to them uh, to professional baseball. So every year, programs uh, that compete at our level are looking at those first-year players to make an immediate impact. So, uh, you know, I, I think through the years we have, you know, developed better on how we speed up that process for those young players. A lot of that comes through practice. We do not have like a formal program where we have a, a veteran player sponsor, a young player, or hitch their wagon to them or anything like that. But, um, you know, I think one of the best things you can do to have a successful program is certainly you have the foundation of what it takes for to be successful. And the best way for that to get into those young players is for it to be passed down from older players to younger players. You know, I can stand in front of them and tell them the things that need to be important and what they need to do. 
But the best form of that is to come from those veteran players that have done it and have lived it. And then I think it really has true meaning and has a chance to really sink into those young kids. What about the uh, back end of your bullpen? Yeah. There. Well, you know, I, I've certainly there's a lot of guys in our in our bullpen that we could use that have a lot of confidence in. You know, uh, I'm not going to name a closer per se. Uh, I think that's going to take shape as we move forward. You know, guys like Kevin Doherty and Alec Bettinger and David Rosenberger. You know, those three players have, have pitched a lot of big innings for us in their time, and I, I believe that they will this year and uh, will be doing things, you know, at the end of the game for us. Uh, there's two uh, transfer pitchers that came in here holding grounds and Tyler Shambora that I think both of them are, are, do, are doing really, really well and I think can contribute for us as well as, as some other guys. Bennett Sousa is a second – your left-handed pitcher that was a really highly touted pitcher out of high school that um, you know just had a tough time getting to innings on the mound last year, and he's really pitching good baseball for us as well. So uh, Jack Roberts, I think, is much improved from where he's been in his first two years. So I think he's another key component as, as well. So you know, there's five, six, seven guys down there that I think are going to do a good job. And I think early on this season, quite frankly, it's going to be kind of mix and match and pitch to situation. We'll kind of see where it takes us. Donner is sort of universally regarded as this top 10, top 15 type draft prospect at this yeah. point. What did you have him sort of concentrate on in the offseason and the admin in the repertoire? I know you have a lot of your guys sort of shut things down for yeah. a while, but what did you have him work on? Well, he, last summer after the season was over, Connor Jones did not pitch, and he specifically just worked on strength and conditioning you know, all summer. And he came back, I thought he was in really good shape, I think he's physically stronger, which will help him, you know, uh, be better at the end of this season. Maybe even more so than he was last year. Um, you know, I think he's pitching some really great baseball. His, his starts, his last, the last three weeks uh, that he's pitched, he's pitched very, very, very well for us. And um, you know, I, I think the biggest thing with Connor is his ability to really command his fastball. Uh, to really be able to throw it on both sides of the plate. I think he's really improved with what's, what he's doing with his off-speed pitches. And when he can command his fastball on both sides of the plate, he's as, as special as it gets out there. So uh, uh, I'm excited to see him move from this highly touted, you know, highly talented player to now he's at the forefront of that rotation, where last year he moved into that situation when Kirby – at his last train, and Connor did a terrific job, you know. But now, you know, he's the leader of that pitching staff, and I'm excited to go out and see him go out there and get us off to a good start. Last year, we wrote a bunch about your approach to the team, especially down the stretch, and maybe being a little more laid back. Yeah. And now you've got this team of half newcomers and rookies. Do you have to change and go back, coach this? Team very differently, I would think, than, than you did. Yes, I, I, I think so. I think every team's different. I think every situation's different. Um, you know, we, like I said, you know, we have over our half of our club is is, is new kids, you know, new guys that need to learn how to play the game and play championship baseball. So um, it's a little bit different. You know, uh, my throat might be a little bit sore, not from the cold weather, but maybe from yelling and screaming a little bit, you know. But uh, that's that's the way it is. And, you know, we right now we're trying to put as much pressure on them as we possibly can through practice. So hopefully, you know, when the lights come on and it's game time, hopefully it slows down for them a little bit. And I think we're doing a disservice to them by, you know, just patting them on the back every day, you know. And so we're challenging them. We're getting them ready. And, uh you know there'll be some there'll be some tough days, and we'll you know we'll see what they're made of on how they respond to those tough days. Is there a style that you're more comfortable with, or it's just whatever the team? Do you prefer being the bad guy? Did you like kicking back a little last year? Um, I don't know. Maybe my heart needed it last year to kick back a little bit and calm down a little bit because the season was very very emotional. Um, you know, and it was when we got into the postseason was the time I think that you know we've done by the time we've done everything we can do we've laid the groundwork we've played the games and everything from that point's a reward and uh, that's the way that we we approached it and so uh, it certainly worked well last year I don't know that there's one I like you know I think everybody likes being a nice guy you know but um, 
uh, you don't always get to where you need to get to being nice all the time. So. How are they responding to that pressure that you're, you're placing on them? Does the energy... Good. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I think, the, I think that, no, I think they're responding to it good. You know, um, some don't handle it real well, uh, but I'm more interested to see how they come back the next day. You know, not necessarily how they handle the pressure right there in that moment in practice, but you know, how do they handle it the next day? Because in this game of baseball, that's what's really important. Because you know, we'll play Friday down there, and then we'll have another game Saturday, and we'll have another game Sunday, and we'll come back here on Tuesday. We just play so many games that you have to have a real short memory. And, um, you know, the only way that I know a new player for uh, to prepare them is, you know, certainly the teaching aspect of it and teaching them the game and the fundamentals to be successful, but then is also putting as much pressure on you as you can because, you know, I'll tell you, when that ball's hit to you on the infield and you got to make the play to, to end the game or you're going to make that clutch pitch or you got to stand in that batter's box and face that guy to dri drive in that run winning run, it's not easy. You know, and so we try to, uh, you know, put as much pressure on them as we can from a practice standpoint and then, you know, hopefully they're full of confidence and it slows down for them a little bit when they play the game. Last time you saw Connor, he was sharing a mat with Carson Fulmer from Vandy. Mm -hmm. He opens this season against uh, Lauer from Kent State. Yeah. The little experience he got last year in that Friday role going in those kind of showcase games where you have two really, really good arms going, how much is that going to help him this season? Well, I, I think I think it'll help him a lot. You know, with what Connor went through in the back half of the year last year, like I said, when Kirby went down, Connor stepped into that role and did a did a really nice job against ever, other Friday starters. And I think you know his experience, you know, certainly in the championship series, it can be can be beneficial. That said. You know, you don't want to ask somebody to do – he can't go out there and do any more than what he's capable of. He's not going to be able to win the game himself. And so he needs to control what he can control. Certainly on Friday against Kent State, he's going to be across from another guy that's, quite frankly, is probably just as talented as him and, and is very, very highly thought of in the Major League Baseball draft as well. So, um, you know, but if he does his job, you know, he'll give us a chance to win. How long did the after – did the aftershocks at Omaha last? Do you still feel them t t today? And was there anything that still sticks in your mind or surprised you about kind of the the weeks and months afterward? Um, you know, I, I think when you when you win a national championship, certainly it it, it never leaves you. You know, um, and you know certainly there's a lot of lingering effects of that. You know, I think when we did this press conference last year, I think about half of you were in the room, right? So I think it certainly can bring a lot more attention, which is exciting, which is good. That's what these young guys deserve is they work so hard, and, and I'm excited that there's that much expectation on our, on our program. Um, past that, not a lot. I can promise you the team that we're going to line up against on Friday at 4 o'clock isn't going to care a whole lot that we won the national championship. Maybe it'll, it, I'm sure it probably motivates um, other teams. So, uh, you know, with that comes a lot of responsibility, but it's, it's a responsibility that we're all looking forward to. Did you guys learn something about yourselves as a staff? Mm -hmm. to, it's not that you didn't know how to put together a team or how to put together a rotation or things like yeah. that prior to that, but when you guys go 9 and 12 from mid March through mid April and you wind up, national champions and it seems like I don't know they they, they flip switched or if guys just suddenly matured or what did you feel like you, you learned something you can use later on down the road when you went through those struggles and then yeah I mean I, I think we learned a lot from last year it's just as, as, as coaches um, the first thing that I would tell you is that uh, you know we've got really great and talented assistant coaches and that our relationship, the four of us, uh, you know, together is really, really special. Because when you have difficult times in that stretch that we went through last year, that eight-week stretch that was as challenging of a time as we've had here in 12 years, you know, that's where you see some organi organizations start to fall apart. You know, maybe some coaches questioning other coaches and things like that, or. Um, you know, players and coaches and, and whatnot, and, and that didn't happen. And I think that's the sign of a really special organization that um, we tried, we just hung together and we tried to figure it out. And we, we have a staff meeting every day at 11 a.m. 
you know, and everybody from our trainer to our equipment guy to our operations people, everybody's in that meeting. And every day through that stretch, we sat there and we pounded our fists on the desk and said, how, how can we keep our head above water and continue these guys getting better and put ourselves in a position to get in the NCAA tournament? You know, and what do we need to do, you know, every day? And so uh, it was a collective effort. And I, I think we learned a lot about each other. Um, learned a lot about how to manage a group of young people uh, through a difficult time. And um, so I know that I'm going to have a ton of takeaways from it, and hopefully it makes our organization even better. Do you have to do something now to be as hungry as a staff because you got your championship and your work is, is kind of done? No, <laughs> no, we don't have to do anything, really. Um, you know, we're... We're motivated each and every day and each and every year to be the, the, the best that we can be. And, you know, we won't be content at all, I can assure you that. To taste what we taste at the end of the year last year of winning it all, um, there's nothing all of us want to do more than to have that opportunity again. And, you know, like I said, we have half the clubs new. And you know, we want to give those that next group of kids that feeling and that opportunity again whenever it is, whenever it happens. You know, uh, that club last year, you know, has something that they'll never forget, and hopefully we have an opportunity to get another group of young men at some point in our future uh, the same memory. How advanced is this group of second years, guys like Payton, oh, compared yeah. to this time last year? Whew. I mean, these guys have gotten a lot better, let me tell you. Uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, when you play in the lineup every day, uh, you know, certainly you're going to get better, but they, they've matured as people. Uh, they're really, really good leaders. Uh, you know, Hazley and, and Smith, those two guys, Ernie Clement, those guys are really, really good baseball players. Um, and so, you know, you could just see in all three of their cases that, you know, they've not only gotten a lot better as players and more consistent, they, they've stepped forward and been really, really good leaders on this club as well.